Today we're here at Arrow Precision looking at the production of the MultiWeb MED crankshaft. Uh, here today with Stuart, Senior Production Engineer, and uh, I'm going to hand you over to Stuart from here. Okay, so this first part of the video is going to discuss going from a raw EM40 billet, we're going to go onto the lathes, we're going to turn it, we're going to run the Mazax, we're going to rough it out, we're going to go right to the pre nitride grinding stage to the hardening process um, and then the next video will continue after that. So we'd start with a raw billet coming from the mill so it would be rusty, not round. So when they first load it in they'll hold, hold on hard jaws on this end and they'll basically turn the OD because it's overhanging so much and we need to turn we support it with a centre in this end and then we put a steady on this end here then we'll blank out the nose end and maybe main one and then the next operation the part will then get turned around and then they do the other end. We put the, the dummy main in at this stage and we put the other main journals in. They're all roughed in to kind of plus one mil um, and it's ready to go on to the Mazak stage next where it needs the big ends putting in, the counterweight profiles and any details So the raw billets came off the lathes and um, we're going to now load it onto the Mazak. Mark's doing a wonderful job. It's held on the steady and then it will be supported with the second head. So this is the main code that's kind of driving the machine. There's streams and streams of code. It basically starts with the, the tool change, calls the right tool, offsets, speeds, feeds. For a lot of people it's just a lot of numbers um, and obviously that's just driving the coordinates on the machine and driving it to the right positions that's come straight from the CAD CAM. So the first thing we'll do is the probe will come in, the next tool basically we need to remove as much material as possible so we'll use the biggest, burliest, fastest tool we've got which is our high feed tools. Um, we'll hog the web profiles out into a basic shape and we'll leave sort of 1.5 mil stock all over it. Then the finishing tools will seamlessly sort of blend the radiuses together and then the end mills blend all the cheek angles and the leading edges etc transfers to head two finishes the cheek angles over there and then it comes off the machine and that's part one finish where we do the, the fettling stages uh, and then the rumbling It's just doing a head transfer to head two. Um, this allows us to get access to all the flywheel details and anything that obviously the other chuck was holding beforehand. It's going to have probing in there now. So it's going to find the datum, it finds the centre of it, and it knows what the offsets are from the numbers that we've given it in the code. So any irregularities as it's had transfer from head one to head two compensates for it so everything remains the same in here too and then it will reference the pin diameter because obviously we've got bolt holes, dowel holes, keyways etc all time to pin one 
we need to keep it timed throughout the whole process. And it's milling the cheek angles, it's milling the OD chamfers, just basically the stuff that we couldn't do it. You'll see in a minute it'll jump to sort of 45 degrees. And if we were trying to do that in head one, the B axis would basically be trying to go through the tool change in the machine that doesn't allow us to do it. So we have to break it up into two halves. So this is off the Mazak, finished profiles, it still needs fettling. Um, so we'll go on after this, the boys will polish and blend any areas with any steps and then they go into the rumble tank which creates like a nice universal finish all over the part so we can control a batch of 10, 20, all looking the same. So this is going to go in there for the next three hours now. I'll turn it on. So it doesn't matter which operator is doing what, the rumble tank creates this beautiful sort of rounded finish. Part two is now drilling the lightning holes is its first operation. Um, it's going to pick crank up, turns it, takes it over to head two. Probe in. Um, this is just to double check again that everything's transferred properly and adjust any offsets if needed. So then we're drilling the lightning holes again. We're drilling the oil holes. In head two. We would also then do the flywheel end uh, bore, flywheel end bolt holes. So this is pre nitride grinding now. Um, the probe comes in again because everything's timed throughout every process. And with the probe in, it just deletes any sort of uh, human error of setup and things. So it's, the program here is very effective on the studer that we can um, kind of simulate where the grinding wheel is going to be on what which certain features. And then again, it's it's diameters, it's diameters, Z positions. Um, and on the screen there you can see that the wheel was just on the flywheel diameter um, just so we know that we've kind of double checked and programmed it properly. Okay then, that's part one complete. Thank you very much Stuart. Okay. Part two is going to show the finished grinding. Um, straight after night riding we're going to put it on the studer. We'll grind all the ends, we'll grind all the flanges and then we'll balance it and then we'll put it in inspection, put it in a box. Okay, just one final point. This is a mini crankshaft we have here. This has got the nose on it. The crankshaft that's actually in the video is a Sprite midget crank, which has a flange, just in case there's any confusion.